Welcome back. I want to talk a little bit about how I care for oil stones, how, how I keep them clean, how I keep them cutting, how I keep them flat, all of that. Just basics. Uh, the basics of these stones that everybody that uses them should know. And the very first thing that I want to talk about is that these stones have an affinity for the way in which you prep the surface of these stones. And what I mean by that is within their individual grades, okay, within the grade of soft, for instance, or, or uh, with these man-made stones, okay, I can make this stone cut more or less within its grade by how I prep the surface. Now I will never prep the surface of a soft Arkansas to make it polish like a black Arkansas would. Okay? Because they're different grades. Okay? And they have different abrasive abilities. But within the abilities of that grade. In other words, within the ability, the range of ability with which, say, this soft Arkansas can cut or polish, I can affect how it does that, how much or how little it cuts, or how fine it polishes, okay, by how I prep the surface of the stone with abrasives, okay, and, uh, it's the same throughout the range of the stones so that they have a lot more versatility than most people understand. People look at these stones, this stone, even this stone, which this is a man-made stone and I love a good India or a good crystalline stone uh, because it will cut. I mean it cuts, okay? Uh, it'll cut pretty much anything out there, I, steel wise, I believe. Uh, but, I mean, this is a natural stone, and these are what I love. Okay? And most people look at these stones and where they go, well, they're outdated, and, and uh, there are better things now, or this is old school, and I don't have time to fool with it, blah, blah, blah. They're not very versatile, because they don't understand this stone, okay? This stone is one of the most versatile types of stones that you'll ever find. Simply because it has that ability to be adjusted within the range that it will cut to do all sorts of different tasks. So that's one. And there's a kind of maybe a drawback, but I don't consider it that. It's the way the stones work, even these stones. Okay. Uh, the characteristic that allows you to adjust that fineness or coarseness of cut and polish also cause these stones to do what a lot of people would call glaze over. And what it is, number one, is that the stone will pick up metal particles, swarf, from cutting and they'll get embedded within the stone and then the stone will begin to cut slower and if you leave it it'll just pretty much stop cutting okay but I also believe that there's a characteristic of these stones that these stones are not like water stones they don't kick up fresh abrasive when you run steel across them and I believe that what also can happen is that when you run steel across these stones, the and for lack of a better illustration, this is not correct, but it'll do. Say that this is the surface of the stone, the top of the stone. You'll have abrasive sticking up like that. And as you hone or sharpen on that steel, on the steel on that stone, what'll happen is they'll get flatter and flatter and smoother and smoother and smooth out to where you, it's barely cutting. So what you have to do is you have to go back every now and then and using abrasives resurface 
the surface of the stone refresh the surface of the stone whatever time you want to use but you have to go back and recondition a bit so that you open up those pores and they stop being like that and start being like that again okay so that they'll cut uh, the approach that most people think or that most people do is an approach that I do not subscribe to most people will take one of these stones and they'll sharpen with the stone and sharpen with it and as it gets less and less effective they'll just sharpen a little bit longer or they'll use more pressure or they'll do all kinds of things to make the stone cut until it stops cutting completely and then they'll go back and they'll resurface it. The problem with that is it's, it's a whole heck of a lot harder to do when you've clogged the stone up so much that you, you know, it just makes it a lot harder. Also, these stones don't dish very easily. These will dish faster than one of these. But they will dish. And putting a whole bunch of pressure on the edge of a blade because the stone's not cutting the way it should, trying to make it cut more, okay? If you do that over an extent, like if, if I put a chisel on this and I take and, and I bear my weight, 230 pounds worth of weight, onto that chisel to try to make it cut. I'm going to dish this stone. I saw a black Arkansas, a coal black Arkansas I know was probably close to a hundred years old at a, a, a thrift store or flea market here, an antiques flea market here uh, not long ago. They only wanted $36 for it. It was like a 10 by 2. But the son of a gun, it was like that thick, but the son of a gun was I can't make my hand, but it was cupped like a son of a gun. Uh, and if I had taken the month, probably, that it would have taken to flatten that out, I'd have a stone about a quarter inch thick when I got done with it, okay? You don't have to do that crap to your stones. Give me a break, okay? What I do is I watch the stone and pay attention to what's going on. And when I first start seeing that it's got swarf in it that's not really coming out or the first inclination that I get that it might not be cutting the way that it should then I'll go back and I'll resurface that stone and when I get done with that then I will prep it to the grit that I want it to be at so that it'll cut the way that I wanted it to cut so the positive side of that is two things at least that I know of. First of all, my stone always cuts the way I want it to cut. If it doesn't, I do something about it. I don't live with it. I do something about it. Also, my stones never dish. They stay flat because once a month or once every six weeks or whatever, the minute I see that that stone is not, and if I sharpen on them more often it's going to be more like once every two or three weeks or something like that but once I see that that stone needs it I go back and do it and at the same time that I'm reconditioning the stone it's also flattening it back to true so if, if it's even tiny just a microscopically out compared to what it was when I first conditioned it it'll go back to flat so I don't have to worry and trust me, uh, you can grind on this stone for decades. It's not going to... This stone right here, this little half inch stone, will last me till I'm dead and gone. Okay? They're that hard and that strong and that dense. And But that's what I do. Now, uh, what about general cleaning? The medium that you use to lubricate your stones, look, I'm not going to get into the oil or water or oil and water and soap. I like oil. I like water and soap. I think it keeps my stone cleaner. I think sometimes uh, the oil that's meant to pull the swarf away can sometimes get embedded in the stone. And they do get impregnated with oil. And instead of washing the swarf away it holds some of it in there and then you have a big gummed up mess. That's what I think. I don't 
care what anybody else thinks about it because they're not using my stones okay and I'm not going to tell anybody that likes oil that they're wrong if it's working for you good if you can deal with how uh, it makes your stones perform and stuff like that it, it you know knock yourself out I like this my stones stay cleaner they don't get clogged up but I, they don't get clogged up also because I don't let them. But with an oil stone, every time you get done using an oil stone, you should take whatever medium it is that you hone with, sharpen with, and you should rub a liberal amount into that and rub it, rub that stone all over, particularly in the places where you see any swarf and it will pull most of that up out of the stone and then you can come with a cloth and wipe it clean and you're good to go. That's general stone maintenance 101 is that every time you get done honing on one do that it'll keep your stone clean longer. And the final thing I guess that I would talk about is I not only do that, but a lot of times, and look, I did this a lot more when I used oil. So I don't do it all the time. But every now and then, if you use oil, I recommend you do this after every sharpening session. I'll take and put some hot water on from the tap. Get it as hot as I can get it from the tap. Put a liberal amount of dish soap on this and take... some kind of scrubby brush like this and scrub the crap out of these stones. Uh, I don't, like I said, I don't need to do it as much now that I moved to this. But it's not going to hurt it. And what will it take? Two or three minutes? I don't see a downside to doing that. So, you know, that's pretty much my take on how I maintain these stones, how I keep them cutting the way that I want them to cut, uh, how I keep them clean, all that kind of thing, how they remain flat. See, I don't have to worry. You know, I, I know people that uh, they'll use a stone and then uh, come find out that stone's dished and uh, this ain't too bad. A diamond stone will take care of this or this, no problem. Or sick powder or something like that. You get a black or a translucent and dish it appreciably. And you're going to be a while scrubbing it on anything you can find. You can concrete, uh, belt discs, paper, uh, uh, an old belt disc. I know people that have taken them to belt sanders because it takes so long that they're, you know, they're, oh, I got a belt sander here, I'm going to hit it, you know. Uh, you ain't got to do all that. If you do what I'm talking about and keep an eye on your stones and straighten them out, the fir at the first sign of trouble, it'll take like five minutes, ten minutes tops to open up the pores, and that's quote unquote, of the stone and get it cutting the way you want it to again, and then another ten or fifteen minutes at the top twenty, depending on how far you're going to take the prep of the stone to prep it back. If you're doing that three every three to six weeks on that stone, <laughs> that's not that big of a deal. You know, people say, well, a water stone is easier to stay flat. Well, maybe because it only takes seconds, but you're going to lap the crap out of that water stone. Alright? You're going to lap it before you hone or after you hone every flipping time. And I'll tell you right now, and this is just a small one, but I have the bigger ones too. This stone, if I use this stone regularly, this is a 1K, 3K. If I use it regularly and lap it like I need to to keep it flat, good luck on it lasting anywhere close to the length of time that this stone will last me. This stone, I'll be buying a new one in four or five years or less if I'm doing a lot on it. Okay, This stone, I'll pass down to my grandchildren. There's a difference. And a big one. 
I'm not knocking these. I use these for razors and sometimes kitchen knives and, and sometimes my pocket knives, depending on the mood I'm in. But these stones can be heirlooms and they are wonderful stones. They're absolutely relevant for today. They're not passe. They're, they're not stones that people should pass up. You should learn what this stone can do because you'll be amazed at them. All right, I'll talk to you later.